Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Amen. <laughs> Greetings, friends and colleagues. It is Sean Alvis. You know, the Bible's clear. You know, the first and most important commandment of all is to love God. Now, I say, how do we love God, Sean? Well, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? But what happens if we don't love God? What happens if we do not keep the commandments? Well, the Bible says in 1 John 4, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that not, loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? You see, the Bible says if you love God and hate your brother, you're a liar. And based on this verse, you know, I think the opposite is also true. You know, if anybody says that they love their brother, but they hate God, they're lying to you. Right? In other words, you could say, you know, if a woman tells you that she loves you, but she doesn't believe in God, she doesn't seek to obey the commandments she's lying to you and and you know she may not even realize she's lying to you she may believe her own lies but you know satan has control over her in that instance so she uh she can't even be trusted of her own self friends in this video i'm tackling the question are virgin women more valuable are virgin women more valuable See, why would anybody ask this question? You know, obviously, this question is going to ruffle up some feathers, you know, especially from the feminists, the liberal snowflakes, um, because, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of men out there who have wives, you know, who, who maybe were not virgins when they, um, when they got married, or maybe fathers have daughters who aren't virgins anymore, and they still believe, you know, they're a little princess. Oh, my wife, she's, she's more valuable than ever. <laughs> Or she's just as valuable as she's always been, you know. And, you know, I'm not saying we should cast stones at these women. You know, I'm sure they're, I'm sure these women make good wives. I'm sure they're good daughters and all that. But what I'm saying here is, statis statistically speaking, a non-virgin woman, a non-virgin bride, excuse me, you know, if she lost her virginity before she got married, she's three times more likely to divorce, to divorce you than a, than a virgin woman. Now, and, and here's the crazy thing, that, that number even doubles, right? So, so if she's had more than one, uh, one sexual partner before marriage, you know, let's say she had three sexual partners. Well, now she's now seven times more likely to divorce you. So st statistically speaking, non-virgin women are um, uh, a divorce risk, a risk for a divorce. Um, not, you know, I'm not saying that to scare you guys or tell you that non-virgin women are hopeless and useless. I'm just trying to make the point that a uh, woman's virginity is valuable. You know, it's precious. You know, But don't mistake me. It's not like I'm trying to lift up virgin women as if they're so high on this pedestal as, as if they're the holy grail of perfection and, and they're sinless and can't do any wrong. And um, Because even a virgin bride can divorce you right so you know um statistically though she's far less likely to do that um you see in relationships men are protective of their women you know they're very territorial you know even jealous you might say at least the honorable men are right as they should be very very well should be um every man understands that you know no man wants another man to tread on his territory right you know if you're sleeping with another man <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna shame you, call you a whore, kick you out of the house, you know. And and every man understands that, you know. Even if 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 I if you're not my first, you know, I'm gonna be a little uh, upset with that, right? Every man understands this, and I'm gonna explain a little bit why this is a good thing, you know. Um, and it's not because you know men are being controlling or they're insecure of themselves, you know. Although some may very well be, that could be the case, but. Um, you know, I think God has embedded in it, embedded, embedded it into our DNA, you know, in the heart of every man. He desires a, a, a pure virgin woman. And in the heart of every woman, you know, 
she knows that she ought to be pure, you know, when she goes to the marriage altar. You know, she knows that if she gives her virginity away before marriage, she's given away something very valuable, something very precious, you know. <clears throat> and the reason why it's so valuable is because it pictures our relationship with God. You see, God's only son, Jesus Christ, he was perfectly pure. He was sinless. The Bible says he was innocent. He was a virgin. He was in complete obedience with the Father, which is love, remember? If you love me, keep my commandments. So, you see, when we sin, we become less valuable, right? Jesus obviously being the most valuable, right? The precious um, Son of God. In, in, the, in the same way, a woman, when she loses her virginity, she becomes less valuable to the husband, right? Less valuable in his eyes, you know, because God wants us all to himself, right? In fact, the Bible says, God is a jealous God, right? Exodus chapter 34 says, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, who his name is jealous, is a jealous God. God actually comes out flat out and says, Hey, my name is jealous. You might as well just call me jealous. Now, why is God jealous? Is it because he's insecure or controlling and wants to, wants to control us? No, no, no. It's because he loves us so much, he doesn't want us hurting ourselves by going against him. You see, he, he is protective. He's a protective and loving God. He cares about us, you know, just like a man wants to protect his wife. You know, he knows that if she sleeps around, she sleeps with somebody else, you know, that other person is not going to be looking after her like I am. You know, they're just trying to use you. You know, for example, you wouldn't want your son to go out and become a crackhead, right? Now, it's not that you're trying to control his free will. You're just trying to protect him, right, from the dangers because you know um, that crack's going to destroy his life. You know that the crack uh, dealer doesn't care about him. You know, this is why things like hypergamy can be so destructive, you know, because some women can lie to themselves and believe that, you know, they're worth more than they actually are, that they're more valuable they're, um, as a um, non-virgin than ones who are not right well just like when the crack dealer when uh the when the bad boy comes along he sweets talks him gets him into uh crack gets him in you know gets him into sin fornication you know he tells them exactly what they want to hear sweet talking him right and then boom they are falling right into the trap you know you see when we sin we inherently lose our value right it's just that's just a, a consequence of sin you know, just like uh, when a woman when a woman whores out her vir her virginity, you know she loses the value in her husband's eyes. The two go hand in hand. It's un it's inescapable. You know, and, and until she asks for forgiveness and admits that she made a mistake, the shame will weigh on her shoulders. You know, for example, when Adam and Eve first sinned in the Garden of Eden, you know they immediately made clothes to cover their nakedness. Why? Because they were ashamed of their sin that they committed, right? They knew they'd done something wrong. They knew they sinned against God and did what they weren't supposed to do. And they felt guilty about it, right? In their hearts. And, and without anybody even telling them they're naked, they're like, oh, shoot, we're naked, right? Because their eyes were open. Now, what happened when God went to question them on it? When, what happened when he said, hey, where are you, Adam? Where are you, Eve? You know, uh, what did you guys do? Did you guys eat that fruit I told you not to? You know, and what did they say? They said, you, oh, well, uh, Adam's like, nah, you, uh, the woman you put me here with, you know, it was her fault. And the woman's like, wow, the snake, you know, he tricked me, right? In other words, you know, they, they just made excuses, you know. So God punished them for it, right? You see, there are two types of women. You know, there are those who give away their virginity and regret it and admit that they were wrong and beg their husband, husband to forgive them. And then you have the other type of woman, you know, she will lie about her past you know, she'll deny that uh, what she did was wrong, that there was anything wrong with losing her virginity. She'll try to say that, oh, well, it wasn't that big of a deal, right? And, and, and she'll, tr or she'll try to transfer the blame to the man. Oh, well, he took my virginity. I didn't give it to him. He raped me, right? False rape accusations. Me too, you know? And she will devise any excuse that she can think of to avoid taking the responsibility, right? Because the Bible says, you know, if she keeps hiding long enough, she can eventually defile her own conscience. She'll actually begin to believe her own lies, you know. 
God may even harden her heart to the point where she's so angry, or excuse me, God's so angry with her that he won't make an effort to uh, reconsider her anymore. You know, just like um, in Egypt, God hardened Pharaoh's heart and said, well, forget you. If you won't let my people go, forget you, right? Now, now I don't, I'm going to pause here for a moment, and I just want to note that, you know, although I am getting hard on the women, you know, this, this also applies to the men as well, you know. So just for the sake of illustration, though, I'm using the women now as, a, as an example. So don't think that um, guys are uh, oblivious or um, not oblivious, uh, uh, immune to this, right? You see, guys, I just want you guys to be aware of the two types of women that are out there so you can avoid them like the plague because they are eternally dangerous. I'm talking about witches, okay? These are women who go around who... who are in public, you know, your own neighbors, your own co-workers, people that look normal, right? And, and, and uh, to, the, to, the, to the untrained eye, they, they, they just look like normal girls, right? But deep down, they're, they're, they're harboring um, sin and, and, and they're trying to hide from it and run away from it and make excuses uh, about it. And they will not want to admit that they're not as valuable as they used to be, right? Because they refuse to admit they sinned, you know? And they will come, and they will prey off you like a vampire. You know, they, they seek your soul. You know, they feed off your value like a vamp... Excuse me. Like a vampire feeds off the blood of the living, these witches will feed off righteous men, right? Their whole strategy is to get you to deny, to deny God like they are denying God. They want you... To believe the same lies that they're telling themselves, right? And they'll do anything in their power to get you to believe that lie, to testify to that lie, to agree with that lie, right? Because they're trying to avoid God's wrath. They're running, they're hiding, and they basically want to use you as kind of like a, a, a witness, you know, and to testify on their behalf, so to speak, right? You guys need to be careful of this, you know? If a woman refuses to admit um, that virginity is important, that losing her virginity was, was a mistake, right? Well, she's rejecting God, you know. If she rejects God flat out, doesn't believe the Bible, or maybe she argues with you on, on something that's clear doctrine out of the Bible, she's a witch. You need to stay away from her, right? Huge red flag. You know, you guys need to be careful of this. Run the other way. Run the other way because she's, she's not looking out for your best interest. She's out to destroy you, you know. And you say, well... You know, why would she want to destroy me, Sean, right? Like, I'll, I'll tell you why. You know, because if you're a righteous man and she can get you to fall, she's going to feel better about herself, right? She's not going to feel so like, oh, it was just me. I made a mistake, right? And and she'll play it off like, oh, I'll see. He did it. So I'm okay with it, right? <laughs> um, but it's not okay. It's wicked. It's sinful. And, and you need to be leery of these women especially easy women who are easy to get in bed, you know, be very cautious of the low-hanging fruit, right? To a woman who's showing off her body in public, you know, went, uh, showing off every curve of her body, trying to get attention, um, you know, and, and she might tell you, oh, well, I just dress this way because it's comfortable, or, you know, oh, I just dress this way because it makes me feel good, right? It's my preference, right? Or, you know, if she's caked up with makeup, guys, she's wearing those long nails, and um, these are signs of a witch, you know what I mean? These are these are telltelling uh, telltelling signs that this woman is is, is after your soul, right? <clears throat> All that pornography um, that you can look at that's out there, you know, that you think that that's helping you relieve the stress, but you, you uh, it's a lie. It's out there to destroy you, you know. All that pornography is free for a reason, gentlemen. Those hookups that you think. Um, are so amazing. You're, you're getting hookup after hookup, pump, pump and dump after pump and dump, right? You think that they're validating you as a man. That's just the cheese in the rat trap. That's the bait to get to trap your soul. You know, listen, guys, the point of my video is not to trash women, and I'm not here to bash you guys for uh, falling for that fruit. I've been there. I've done that, you know. And I'm not here to bash the women who've, you know, lost their virginity. Um, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us is guilty of falling into that temptation. 
But my point is, and what I want you guys to recognize is this, is you need to learn how to distinguish the difference between a person who has rehabilitated themselves, who has restored their honor, restored their value by repenting of their sin, by admitting they were wrong, accepting their punishment for their wrongdoing, and has forsaken their evil ways, versus the person who refuses to admit their mistake, who never asks for forgiveness and who hasn't learned anything, you know? Because these people are like vampires. They're like predators, extremely dangerous, criminal sinners. The Bible calls them witches and sorcerers, right? And an unrepenting sinner only has one goal, and that's to bring you down to their level. They want to destroy your value, to destroy your worth, because it makes them feel better. Just like a bully. The reason a bully has got to bully you is because deep down inside, he's a coward. And he wants to bring you down to his level. You guys got to um, understand what's happening so you can avoid that, you know? Remember, guys, God is a jealous God. And if you're not serving God, he won't accept you. <laughs> he won't accept you, right? But you, here's the good news, right? You know, just like you guys wouldn't accept marrying a whore, right? You don't want to marry a whore, right? If you've done something wrong, you can apologize to them. You know, you can make it right, you know? And if they don't want to forgive you, well, that's on them. The wrath of God will abide upon them. But tell yourself this. Tell yourself, hey, I made a mistake. You know, I sinned. I admit it. Admit it to yourself. Admit it to God. And say, hey, I accept full responsibility. Whatever punishment you uh, find is just on me, God, go ahead and I'll take it. Once you accept that, you can move forward. You can restore your value. And you will be fully restored. You know, the Bible says... Um, I think it's in 1 John chapter 5 verse chapter 5 or I think it's in 1 John maybe for first chapter but it says if you confess your sins he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you for, from all unrighteousness you know so go to the person that you may have sinned against or sinned with right and tell them hey I made a mistake I was wrong you know I'm sorry and it doesn't matter how they respond to you, you know. Their, your conscience at that point will be clean. It'll be clear, you know. So just don't make the mistake, though, of, of giving these, um, these, these unrepenting people, these unrepenting sinners um, a blank check and saying, Oh, I forgive you. Uh, you didn't do anything wrong. It's not that big of a deal, right? It is a big deal, you know. And if you don't repent from that sin and acknowledge that you did sin, um, the wrath of God will abide upon you, you know. And... And don't be afraid to call these people out on their sin. You know, and if they refuse to admit it, hey, <laughs> then you know you're dealing with a witch. You know, and to hell with them. Let them burn. You know, she, and, 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 and here's another piece of advice, guys. If a woman tells you, hey, I'm ugly, <laughs> or she tells you, hey, I'm trash, believe her. She's telling you the truth. You know, she's giving you the red flag. Anyway, that's my message, gentlemen. That's my message for the day. I hope, um, I hope I said something edifying that could uh, maybe boost your spirit, maybe teach you something, uh, maybe give you some encouragement in moving forward and having to deal with these witches. Um, anyway, that's my message, gentlemen. You guys stay, stay strong out there because, you know, the devil is out to get us, you know. But, but if we stick with God and we obey his commandments, he can't touch us. You know, he, he cannot touch us because God's got us protected. Anyways, that's my message. This has been Sean Elvis. I'm going to be signing off. And as usual, I'm going to give God the last word. You guys have a great day. God bless. Um, a reading from Psalms chapter 32 says, When I kept silence, my bones wax old through my roaring all day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Many sorrows shall be, the wick shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall come pass about him. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous. Shout for joy.
all ye that are upright in heart. Amen. God bless.